Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the graduation ceremony for the class of 2017. Please remain standing for the national anthem, played by the high school band, directed by Mr. Craig Hay.
You may be seated. At this time, I would like to introduce Emily Mastriani, President of the Class of 2017, to welcome you all here this morning. Welcome, everybody. Parents, teachers, staff, families, and classmates. You are all sitting here prepared to listen to my speech and the others for one reason. The class of 2017 has finally reached the end of our four years here at Hopkinton High School. Before I start my speech, I'd first like to mention some people that need recognition. To the administration and teachers, none of us would be here if it wasn't for you, and we are extremely thankful. I would personally like to thank our class advisors, Mrs. Millette and Ms. Roberts, as well as the other three on our little team, Cam, Mercedes, and Sid. I cannot thank you all enough. So, as I've been thinking of this speech, I've also been thinking about how quickly high school has gone and all the things I've done in my time here. Not necessarily here at the school, but all the time I've spent with my family and friends as well especially as the days I will constantly be with my two brothers are coming to an end. Over the past two summers, I've been down in Sagamore Beach on the Cape, pulling lobster traps with Ryan and Chris and making a business out of it. The days on the water have been fun, but some of my favorite summer memories have just been sitting on the hot sand, watching the waves come and go in front of me for hours. Pretty simple, I guess, but as I've come to realize, the waves remind me of much more than summers in Cape Cod. When I look at the class of 2017, I see a group of people that I've been seeing forever. The individual people come together to create our class. Four years ago, when we were freshmen, I looked out to our class and I saw the same people, but younger, smaller ripples. When I look out to you all, I see the surface of everyone in our class. But the potential, talents, gifts, and secrets is something that is hidden within the depths. When I look out into the ocean, I see a vast blueness that looks the same all over, and it ends when my eyes hit the horizon ahead. And though I can't see it all, the ocean goes on and on, bringing you to different shores all across the world into depths that I wouldn't even be able to discover. Looking out at the waves, I see a full ocean, just as I see the small sea of humanity that is the class of 2017. We are together as one, but we are just small ripples of something much bigger than ourselves. When we were in eighth grade, we were at the very beginning of our journey. We were small and hadn't come together much yet, but we were preparing for an experience that we wouldn't even be able to imagine. We started as a pond flowing to the opening of a river. We can all certainly remember being crowned as the class of swag and walking out those middle school doors for the last time ever. Quickly, we entered the river that would guide us all through high school with the whips and turns and crazy experiences we sometimes didn't see coming. I think we will all remember the riptide picking up and our class making a mark on the administration and the school with the infamous anonymous zebra fiasco. Drifting further down the river, the riptide subsided and we found ourselves flowing through the days and finding a real connection and belonging here at HHS. The feeling of pride as we won the annual Powder Puff game both junior and senior year is something... <laughs> <laughs> is something that will stick in my mind for a very long time. We got closer to the mouth of the river as we moved through the motions of senior year the year we had looked forward to since we walked through the atrium doors, seeing the tall and a little bit scary seniors. As we've come closer to this point, I've been able to get a view of the end, where our class breaks off into the full ocean. And I'm also able to see how far we've come. The pond where we started is just a small droplet of the past. This year has given us a multitude of memories, like Super Bowl 51 and the freezing but pride-filled Pats Parade our glimpse of fame as we made the news for Senior Assassin, <laughs> and our last dance ever that we planned ourselves with the help of DJ Sauce. 
And finally, after miles and miles of being pulled along in this river, we have reached the mouth of it and we're forced to move on. There is no stopping now and what's ahead of us is going to shape us forever. We are all forming the ocean beyond us. Each of us is a ripple that will be carried across the world, landing on different shores and uncovering new experiences and feelings and reaching different depths of the ocean. But as different as this all makes us, we are all still one and bounded by the shared experience of high school and being a part of the class of 2017. As I mentioned earlier, we truly are something much bigger than ourselves. And when I look out to you all and see an ocean of faces, I also see each individual that makes our class who we are and who we'll always be. A class is unique in that we don't choose to be together, it just happens that way. And over the course of years, the way we come together and the people we become is different from any other group. As I look at you all now, I know that I will remember you for the different things you've accomplished and become a part of. We will all remember the captivating HHS Press articles written by Mikey Carlos, listening to the talented musicians like Bella Comodromos and John Katz at talent shows, and cheering from the bleachers as Jimmy Adams throws a football down the field. I will remember my eight seasons of track running alongside Isabel Giordano, the very motivational Instagram posts from Toby White, and the contagious laughs of Olivia Spar and Matt Lawrence. I'll also remember simply standing up next to my classmates to recite the Pledge of Allegiance every single morning. It's gonna be weird not doing that anymore. When I was little, I remember my babysitter came over before her junior prom so we could see her dress and take pictures with her. I remember looking at her and not being able to understand just how old she was and how far away high school seemed. And I couldn't wait until I could be just like her, mature and grown up. Looking back on that though, I wish I could have stayed seven years old for much longer. I still don't know how these past four years have gone, come and gone so quickly. And I feel blessed to have grown up in this town and to have been a part of HHS with my classmates by my side this entire time. A few months ago, my mom told me that graduation is called a commencement ceremony. I've heard that before, but it didn't mean much to me. I have to say I've been looking at this day like the end of high school, which it is. But a commencement is a beginning, and I like thinking of this day as just that. Within just a couple months, our grade will be scattered across the country, even the world. Classmates, look at the people around you. This is the last time we will be together in one room for the rest of our lives. And thinking about that has shown me how much we've grown over the past 12 years. Sure, we've grown up a lot literally, but especially over the past four years, our grade has matured and grown into the people we are today. And it makes me really sad to see this and have to go off into our separate directions. The last four years have been great, definitely the best years of my life thus far. But the next four will hold so much more for all of us, and I'm ecstatic to see what you all will do. So class of 2017, Come up and take your diploma today, not to say that you've made it, but to accept it as an invitation to the future. Surf down the top of this wave, but know that there are many, plenty more to come. And expand your horizons, but know that Hopkinton will always be there for you to come back to. I am so humbled and honored to have served you all as class president throughout these years, and I wish you the best of luck in the future. Thank you and congratulations. And now I would like to introduce Assistant Superintendent Dr. Cavanaugh to say a few words. Hopkinton High School faculty, staff, administration, parents, families, friends, and most importantly graduates, it's my pleasure to address you this evening. Class of 2017, in a few moments, you will slide those tassels across your mortarboards, and with diplomas in hand, you will be graduates of Hopkinton High School, united as Hillers. Before talking with you tonight, 
I tried to think about your pre-kindergarten to grade 12 experiences, your journeys, so to speak. Oh, I envisioned center school where you learned phonemic awareness and such phonics phenomena as associating letters with their sounds. F and V, for example, are the exact same configuration in your mouths, but one is voiced, the V, v and the other is not, the F. Go ahead, try it. These sounds are called fricatives, and fricatives aside, you soon discovered that there were only 26 letters. Surely you were going to master them all, and you did. In application, then, you could read. In fact, you could read the universally revered Very Hungry Caterpillar, written by Eric Carle. Come on, you remember it. Pop, the little egg hatches, and out comes a tiny caterpillar. Tiny and hungry. So hungry that he taught you to count as you move through one apple, two pears, three plums, and so on. So hungry that he walked you through the days of the week, the second being two pear Tuesday. Sated and chubby, your caterpillar friend found his way into a cocoon where he went dormant for a spell, emerging no longer tired or hungry, but rather as a quite beautiful butterfly. Thus, you also learned about the life cycle. Heck, by all accounts, armed with reading letters, colors, numbers, days of the week, and even the life cycle, you might have had all you needed even as you left the bricks and mortar of the center school. But you didn't quit. You kept on learning under the tutelage of the faculty you see here tonight and so many others. So much so that you are now able to read that very hungry caterpillar with fresh eyes. You now know that caterpillars belong to the class Insecta and the order Lepidoptera, that gypsy moths are an invasive species, and that according to folklore, a big brown band on the woolly bear caterpillar means a harsh winter. You have grown to admire how Eric Carle creates his illustrations in his books using color and a technique called collage, which Eric Carle himself attributes to Picasso and Matisse. Approaching Eric Carle's text through a Marxist lens, you watch that caterpillar work and work and work tirelessly. However, the reader's empathy, although it should not, will lie with that butterfly in the end whose bourgeoisie class renders him an effortless existence. A feminist approach enrages the reader at the absence of any female character in a book written by a white male. Why must we concern ourselves with the life of that male car caterpillar whose activities are reduced so typically to eating and sleeping? And of course, overindulgence into chocolate cake, ice cream, pickles, salami, lollipops, Swiss cheese, watermelon, and sausages resulting in a bad belly ache appeals to our capitalist readers. Consume, consume, consume without regard. Oh yes, graduates, you have grown quite intellectual and sophisticated in your many years here in Hopkinton. For even beyond your understanding of all of those aforementioned isms, even your math prowess now allows you to predict caterpillar populations using formulas of exponential growth and decay. Oh, how you have grown, but remember, Although it seems like you have learned it all, and I'm sure your parents will concur that at times you think you've learned it all, you will discover so much more beyond this campus. Class of 2017, Hopkinton High School has been your cocoon for some time. Tonight, you spread your wings with heads full of math and reading, problem solving and science, lots of isms, appreciation for the arts, and more. When you wake up tomorrow morning, wake up hungry. Hungry for every opportunity that life will present to you hereafter. Hungry to use what you have learned here, here in Hopkinton. Class of 2017, on behalf of the Hopkinton Public Schools, I wish you a healthy and gratifying future, surrounded, just as you are here tonight, by the people who love and admire you. 
Congratulations. And now I would like to introduce the salutatorian of the class of 2017, Claire Wu. Thank you so much, Dr. Kavanaugh. Hi, everyone. It is an outstanding honor to speak here today in front of all of you, and especially my fellow graduates. I'm so proud of you guys, and I will miss you. And before I start, I want to say, guys, made it on time. I know some of you are worried. 10 minutes early, to be, to be fact. Um, I know some of you are worried. I'm looking at you, my parents. Now, unlike a lot of my peers, this isn't the end of a 12-year journey for me in the Hopkinton school system. I first moved here the summer before my freshman year. Now, when you're 14 years old, decked out in Justice and Abercrombie and & Fitch and just trying to make sense of your life, there's little worse news you can imagine receiving than the news that your family is packing up and moving. For my first few weeks here, I felt pretty lost. This town of strangers seemed so new and foreign. It was nice, but it wasn't home. Something happened in those first weeks, though, that really showed me what makes this town a great place to grow up. After running into a neighbor on a walk who has a daughter in our grade, that daughter, who turned out to be our classmate Natalie Guarino, showed up at my house the next day wearing a Hopkinton shirt and carrying a plate of homemade cookies. Those first few months were a really uncertain time for me, and that one act of kindness changed my entire perspective on my transition to Hopkinton. We are about to enter another uncertain time in our lives. Our circle of randomly selected faces that we know out of the seven and a half billion people in the world is, are about to get a lot bigger. It will be strange and at times discouraging. In this time, I encourage you to trust in the value of random acts of kindness, to lend happiness to others freely and fondly. Wherever you may be next year, Make your own community a loving and welcoming place, as Hopkinton was for me. You never know whose day you might brighten and how long they may remember your one small act. Right now, I'm thinking about how lucky we are to be in this building in Hopkinton out of all the diverse places on this earth we could have ended up. We've received an incredible education. We live in a safe, friendly, well-resourced town. We won this category of life's proverbial lottery. It's amazing luck, luck that sometimes overwhelms me when I think about it. However, it's also important to acknowledge that the path to here was laid for us by those who came before us. For me, it was by my parents, without whose astounding foresight, love, and hard work, I don't know where I'd be. To all those who have made not only today, but the last 18 years possible for all of us, including the remarkable teachers and staff at the school, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Graduates, it's now up to us to make the most of this gift. As high school graduates, we step out as global citizens into a world that stands upon the precipice of great change. It's growing at a rapid pace, with 360 new people, 360,000 new people born every day new bridges, schools, hospitals, and cities rising by the second. It's a time of revolution and innovation. It's breathtaking. But as a world, we're also bursting at the seams. Poverty, famine, war, and political turmoil prevail on devastating scales. We've never been closer to seeing the end of diseases once thought incurable, or to breakthroughs on new technological frontiers, which will ease burdens on all of us or plummeting infant mortality rates in developing countries. We've also never been closer to widespread nuclear destruction, the haunting fears of terrorism, or the tragedy of the largest migrant crisis since World War II. It is an exciting time to be a high school graduate, and it is a scary time to be a high school graduate. I urge you all, as I was told recently, to not only go forth and take over the world, disrupt the world, shake up the status quo, 
advance the world, but heal the world. Make your mark and infuse that mark with kindness and compassion, for these things multiply endlessly and invest in a future larger than any one of us. They essentialize a fulfilled life. Go far by going together. It takes a village, so make yourself a useful part of one. Climb the mountain, not only to see the world, but to help those hiking along on the path with you to reach new heights of their own. And through it all, when you're not too busy saving the world, remember to treasure the moments of a less grand scale. When things got too hectic in high school, I would try to remind myself that everything is so beautiful and so short. I found that it helped clear my view of the really important things and to help me appreciate them before they're gone. Whether wandering through a quiet forest the morning after a snowfall, dancing your heart out with friends for a moment forgetting there's anyone else around, or sitting still taking in a moving music performance, everything is so beautiful and so short. Looking back on high school, I can't help but feel that it was beautiful. Even through all the stressful nights of math homework, SATs, essays, and friendship drama. Okay, maybe not the SATs. But there were the Friday night football games, the theater shows, and winning sports memories. Prom, our class prank, and the nights spent with friends when you realized these were the people you cared about more than almost anyone else, whom you are so lucky to have in your life, for you wouldn't be the same without them. These moments are beautiful, because they're ours. And though, sometimes in the middle of it all, it was hard to see the forest for the trees, now that high school is behind us, I feel that it was all so short. It seems like just yesterday, we were sporting our neon highlighter class shirts at pep rally, playing Unite Capture the Flag, and stressing over modern world history and intro to physics grades. We've come so far since then, blossomed into the athletes, musicians, poets, actors, and scientists that we'd hoped to be. And the exciting thing is, we're all still works in perpetual progress. If we have the courage of our convictions and remember to never lose sight of the most important, important currencies in life, those of passion, empathy, resilience, and hope, all the world, as far as our dreams and our drive can take us, lies ahead. There's so much to learn, explore, and experience, and we don't have any time to waste. Class of 2017, I'm so grateful and humbled to be a part of you. I can't wait to see all that we do. Let's make it impressive. Let's make it kind. Let's make it wonderful. Thank you. At this time, I would like to invite 24 of our talented students whose names are in your program to get ready for their musical number. And as they do so, I would like to take this opportunity to give some special thank yous to the people who have worked so very hard for the setup and production of this graduation set, uh, possible. First off, thank you to class advisors Diane Millette and Maxine Roberts and the class officers, Emily Mastriani, Sid Shindy, Mercedes LaHaye, and Cam Boyce. Thank you to our guidance administrative assistants, Nadine Hoagland and Connie O'Laughlin, our technical support personnel, Linda Henderson, Mike Wolf, and Matt Cipriani. Thank you to Craig Hay for the excellent music here tonight. Thank you to Larry Keene and our custodial staff, Bob Fleming and our maintenance staff, as well as the folks at HCAM for filming and broadcasting the event. Thank you to the hardest working and most dedicated staff, K through 12, that without your passion and commitment, the futures of these graduates would not be so bright. Thank you to our wonderful front office, uh, made up of Cindy Grilly, Donna Plunkett, and assistant principals Josh Hanna, Justin Pominville, and Officer Powers. And lastly, a huge heartfelt thank you to the best principal's assistant I could ask for in the amazing Leslie Moothart. I'm sad to say that tonight's, yes. I am very sad to say that tonight's graduation is Ms. Moothart's last here in Hopkinton as she'll be moving to California in the upcoming weeks. I'm still pretending like it's not actually happening as she'll be such a tremendous loss for us here at the high school. But we're all so happy for her and wish her nothing but the best in the next chapter of her life. So please join me in a round of applause to show our appreciation to Ms. Moothart for her many years of exemplary performance, dedication and commitment to this school system.
Thank you. I'll miss you, buddy. And now our students will perform their musical number. Eric, hit it. Hi, everyone. So I thought of the idea for this speech while in detention. For those of you who are shocked by that statement, you obviously don't know me very well. This past school year, I accumulated a total of 35 tardies and 10 complete absences. I began to expect orange slips summoning me to the main office regularly, and I ended up serving three detentions for my absenteeism, although it definitely should have been more than that. And I don't regret it at all. I'm a strong believer in doing things for the memories. When, in the beginning of second semester, Mr. Sullivan asked why I was going to be missing our next psych class, I told him, honestly, in 20 years from now, I'm gonna remember being at the Patriots Parade in Boston more than I'm gonna remember missing this one class. I can't say he seemed too thrilled to hear that at first, but in the end, I think he understood what I meant. Now, I'm not saying that school is unimportant. An education like the one we all received from Hopkins High School 
is one of the greatest privileges you can have in life. But you can't watch life go by from the bedroom window above your desk. You can't turn down plans with friends every weekend to do homework. And you can't stress yourself out so much that your mental health or even your happiness takes a toll. Every once in a while, you just have to skip school to go to a parade. In preparing for this speech, I did some research. I googled what makes a valedictorian. I got answers like punctuality, dedication to studying, focus on the goal, and having a competitive nature. Honestly, I wouldn't use any of those words to describe myself. Achieving success, however you define it, is more about knowing yourself than about having the specific characteristics people expect you to. I know I'm never on time for anything. I know I procrastinate more than anyone else I know, but I also know that I can get myself up at 4.30 in the morning to write an entire paper before school if I have to. Confidence in your strengths and real awareness of your weaknesses are the only factors you truly need to be able to get where you want to go. My goal was never to be valedictorian. I just took the classes that I wanted to and did my best. The only person I ever tried to compete with was myself, because self-improvement is so much more important than comparing yourself to others. I wanted to seize every opportunity that I possibly could in high school, and I bet there are countless peers of mine who did just that. Each and every one of us made the most of these past four years and grew as individuals. Some people have said that becoming valedictorian means that you won high school, but how can you win something that isn't really a competition? We all got a great education, and we're all getting diplomas today proving just that. The only way you could possibly lose high school is by leaving with any regrets. Our class is made up of some of the most impressive artists, athletes, musicians, science fair contestants, writers, and leaders that I have ever met, who have all found amazing success pursuing their own passions. The only reason I'm the one standing up here right now is because of an arbitrary number called GPA. That's origins and calculation are a mystery to everyone. This, neither, this number neither defines me, nor do I think that it proves anything about who I am as a person. It doesn't take into account personality, optimism, sass, or percentage of each day spent doing what you love. It isn't calculated using a ratio of how many memorable days you've had out of the 365 we're given each year, and it represents nothing about the people in your life that you've met along the way. The real things that matter just can't be summed up by an algorithm in power school. In the end, valedictorian is just a title, a word made up by some random person and given meaning by the rest of society. Yes, it can show hard work in the classroom or conformity to school standards, but a researcher at Boston College recently found in her study that valedictorians aren't usually the ones that become the very top achievers in adulthood or visionaries who truly shake up the system. Academic success in high school doesn't always translate to success in the real world. I'm positive that so many of us will go on to do amazing things in the future that we can't even imagine. And the fact that my name is collecting dust on a banner in the atrium will really mean nothing. However many titles and accolades someone receives doesn't mean anything if they never made a real impact on the people around them or made memories that will last a lifetime. That is what the real goal should be. Because as Mr. Franchock would say, titles are just a social construct. Now congratulations, class of 2017. I'm looking forward to seeing you all at our class reunions in the years to come, but I'll probably be late to those two. Thank you. And now I would like to call up the class of 2017 class officers to present some awards. Good evening, and thank you for everyone, thank you to everyone for coming out and celebrating this great occasion with us. My name is Sid Shindy, the treasurer for the class of 2017, and I am here to present the class gift. To honor the memory of students lost by some of our HHS schoolmates, we will be gifting money to the Thomas Weaver Be Positive Memorial Scholarship, the Keep Smiling for Abby Scholarship, and the Shane DeRoach Memorial Scholarship Fund. Next, the cafeteria has always been a gathering point for students in the morning before the first bell, during lunches or studies, or after school before practice or a club meeting. Last year's graduating class created a beautiful garden outside the cafeteria 
in memory of Abby Benford. So the second part of our class gift will be three circular picnic tables outside the cafeteria to encourage more people to spend time out there on nice days. Finally, we will be installing a personalized class of 2017 bench outside the atrium on the way into the school to replace the ones which were damaged last winter. Thank you. And now Mercedes LaHaye will present the class advisor gift. Good evening, everyone. My name is Mercedes Marie LaHaye, and I'm the vice president for the class of 2017. Tonight, I have the privilege to be talking about two very influential women that have helped our, us throughout our high school careers. Class advisors oversee and guide the class officers by providing insight when creating events for the class, making important decisions, and probably the biggest challenge yet, keeping us officers on schedule. The class of 2017 wants to thank you, Ms. Roberts and Mrs. Millette, for all the hard work and sacrifices you have made for our class. Your patience and devotion is truly admirable. Ms. Roberts, I am so thankful that I have known you for so many years. You have helped me grow as a student and as a person, and you are a wonderful role model for students. And for that reason, I hope everyone has a chance to meet you. Mrs. Millette, I've had you in two classes over the years, and I've learned so many important lifelong lessons. You are someone that students can confide in if they have any issues, and that is a remarkable quality to have. Each of you has helped make these past four years unforgettable for the class of 2017. So to thank you and help de-stress from these crazy years, we want to give you each a lighthouse brunch cruise along with these gift baskets. So please come on up and receive your gifts. Now I would like to introduce Cameron Boyce, who will be presenting the yearbook dedication. Hey everyone, um, I'm Cameron Boyce and I'm the senior class secretary. So dedicating the 2016-17 yearbook to Kathy Berry, the cafeteria worker, was a no-brainer for the students of Hopkins High School. Each day, Kathy radiates positivity, spreading joy throughout the halls of HHS. From the way she carefully selects the best cookies to her bright smile and kind attitude, Kathy has been making our days from the moment we began freshman year to our last day of senior year. For 30 years, she has taught the student body one of the most valuable lessons that we will learn in our time here, that kindness matters. Certainly not to belittle the lessons that the wonderful faculty have taught us over the years at HHS, but we will never forget the way Kathy Berry treated us, knowing everyone's name, greeting us with a smile, and making our days brighter. Kathy's kindness is something that the students will carry with us as we move on from these halls. Thank you. <laughs> She's coming. <laughs> Kathy, we would like you uh, to invite you up to the, receive the yearbook. like to go off the books
for a second and talk about a gift that we have all had for the last four years. Miss Leslie Moonhart has worked at Hopkins High School for the last nine years. We have been blessed to be directly impacted by her dedication, hard work, and organizational skills that have positively affected not only our class, but Hopkins High School as a whole. Miss Moonhart knows the answer to every question, has a solution to every problem, and keeps us on track to accomplish all of our goals. In just a short time, Miss Moonhart will be moving to California to be closer to her family. But it is her Hopkins High School family here that will miss her terribly. Miss Moonhart, from the bottom of our hearts, thank you for all that you've done here, and we wish you all the best. Ms. Moonhart, we would like to call you up to receive a gift to show our appreciation. <laughs> Now I'd like to call up Ms. Jennifer Fairbanks to present the Marion T. Harris Award this evening. Welcome. Today is a good day to be the messenger. I am honored to represent the person for whom this award is named, Mrs. Marion T. Harris, and I have the privilege of presenting it to an amazing student. I graduated from Hopkinton High School a few years ago on a beautiful Monday night, right outside on the grass in the back of what is now the middle school, with a class of 92 students, and was surprised to have won the Marion T. Harris Award myself. My mother-in-law, Sandra Fairbanks, also graduated from Hopkinton. She is here in the audience and knew Mrs. Harris. Her daughter, my sister-in-law, Susie, had Mrs. Harris as a teacher. They shared some stories about her because she was a teacher they both fondly remember. My mother-in-law was on the student council. Mrs. Harris was the advisor. Back in these days, Hopkinton had a dress code, and girls were not allowed to wear pants, but had to wear dresses or skirts. Their skirts had to be at least an inch below the knee. Mrs. Harris tasked my mother-in-law with the job of going around with a ruler and measuring girls' skirts. She had high expectations and people respected her. My sister-in-law had Mrs. Harris as a chemistry teacher and was mistakenly placed in an honors class. She struggled and wanted to drop down. She said the other kids got it and made it look easy. Mrs. Harris wouldn't let her. She encouraged her to stay and made her work. She told her by struggling, she was really understanding the material and learning it. Susie went on to college for nursing and aced chemistry. From 1935 to 1980, Mrs. Harris held many jobs, including teacher, department head, assistant principal, principal, and acting superintendent. She was a coach and a club advisor too. We could say she was well-rounded and that really describes this recipient as well. I don't know how she does all that she does and balances it so well. I have had her in class and she worked hard and was determined to do well. However, I have known this recipient since she was in eighth grade because even then she stood out. I have been part of Relay for Life committee since it started 11 years ago. Five years ago, I remember Olivia Sparr as a fresh and eager eighth grader coming to the meetings prepared with creative outside the box fundraising ideas. Relay is her passion and she has a gift at leading and volunteering. She is hardworking and organizer, organized. 
she is a great delegator too. By 10th grade, she was helping run Relay, and last year, as a junior, she was named New England's Relay for Life's Volunteer of the Year out of all the students and adults who run the relays across New England. In these past four years, since Olivia has been part of Relay, and with her amazing committee members, they have helped Hopkinton raise $489,666 to fight cancer. This year, we were number 10 in the nation for the top youth events in terms of fundraising, and we were the number one school in the country in terms of advocacy. She is making a difference. Once you start volunteering at a young age, you are more likely to continue. This student is going to go on to do many more great things, and it is my privilege to award Olivia Spar the Marion T. Harris Award. I would like to now invite our principal, Evan Bishop, back to the podium. Thank you, Ms. Fairbanks, and congratulations again, Olivia, very well deserved. I'd like to start by offering my sincere congratulations to the class of 2017 as we celebrate your collective achievements here tonight. I feel very fortunate to have served as your principal over the last four years and honored to be the one that gets to sign your diplomas. This past week at Senior Picnic, Boat Cruise, and Recognition Night, I had the good fortune of witnessing your anticipation as we neared graduation night. Now that we're actually here, perhaps it is sinking in all that you have achieved, the many challenges you have overcome, and the hours of hard work you have put in to ultimately reach this milestone. So I hope you take some time over the next few months to truly reflect on this accomplishment. I'm sure your families in the crowd tonight are experiencing a lot of emotions during the ceremony as well but pride is undoubtedly the strongest, and I share that emotion with them. Now, as we know, one of our town slogans is, it all starts here, of course, a nod to the marathon. And as I began preparing this speech, I realized a connection I share with all of you. It's interesting because we all started here in the Hopkinton system at the exact same time together. In late August of 2005, while most of you, or should I say your parents, were getting ready to send you off to first grade to start your careers here in Hopkinton, I was getting ready to start my first real job at 24 years old here at the high school as a guidance counselor. And I'm sure all of us came to school on that first day, whether it was here for me or the center school for all of you, filled with excitement of what was to come over the years. And look at us now. You, academically and statistically speaking, the highest performing class we've had since opening this building in 2001. and me, the principal who took away your dances. <laughs> Although I must say, I believe those two are more closely related than you may think. I helped remove the pressure of worrying what to wear or who to ask to these dances. Instead, you were able to stay in on Friday nights and study, so you're welcome. <laughs> now, when we decided that we were gonna take a time out from having all school dances, one of the many, many critiques I received was from a concerned parent who sent me an email and said, and I quote, what happens when Hopkinton graduates go to college events or weddings or work gatherings and they have no notion of how to dance and limited experience at big social settings? Shame on you. <laughs> now, for the record, I have to admit, I've never attended a work event where I was required to use the dancing skills that I learned in high school. <laughs> Nevertheless, I take that parent's concern very seriously. The last thing I would want is if in 10 to 15 years from now you are at a wedding and someone comes up to you and says, wow, you are a terrible dancer. And your reply is, well, you can blame my high school principal for that. That has not sat well with me for the last few years. However, to my surprise, last week for this class's senior prank, they put together, what else, a dance party with over 200 students on the landing outside of the library with DJ Sauce on the ones and twos up on the senior balcony. And after watching what I'll call this scene for about 10 minutes, I can assure you and that parent who emailed me two years ago that this group is going to be just fine at college events. <laughs> Work and wedding events, eh, they might need some work. So enough about dances, let's get back to the incredible successes of this group, which is a list that is both long and impressive. 
For example, this class has many remarkably talented musicians and performers, as we heard earlier tonight. We also have some of the best leaders we've ever had in fields like theater, art, engineering, robotics, journalism, GSA, Relay for Life, and student council. 25 student athletes in this group will continue competing at the collegiate level next fall in a variety of sports, and we have multiple students attending Ivy League schools from this class. Simply stated, you are a group so well-rounded and talented that it will be tough for me and many others to forget for years to come. You are truly an excellent class of young adults. So I have no doubts that you are all destined for greatness and that you don't need to hear any inspirational quotes or mantras from me as you start the next chapter of your life. However, as your principal, I would be remiss if I didn't leave you with a few bits of wisdom that I've collected throughout the years that have served me well. First, some of the most valuable assets in your life will be your relationships and the time that you put into them. I had the good fortune of going to high school when there was basically no internet. I repeat, no internet. And I know that's hard for many to believe, especially because I'm so young and hip. But without the ability to communicate through text messages or distractions of social media, I was able to spend uninterrupted, focused time with the people I love. And I count my relationships with my high school and college friends as some of my most prized possessions. And I don't mean to say that life was better pre-internet. There is no doubt that technology has and will continue to improve the way we do many things. But a text message or a Snapchat will never be a substitute for spending real time with your family and friends. Life is and always will be about relationships first, so please know that a text or an emoji just won't cut it sometimes. Please pick up the phone every once in a while, write a letter, give someone a much needed hug, and spend actual time with your loved ones, not just screen time with them. Second, keep your mind and your heart open. For the next four years and beyond, you will encounter people that come from different places and different backgrounds and who may think and act differently than you. I'd encourage you to be open to these people their life experiences, and their world views. The easiest path in life may be to stay in your comfort zone and surround yourself with other like-minded people. But when you force yourself to question your values, your assumptions, and truths, you truly grow, learn, and become your best self. The third is be proud of where you came from, and I know this is used a lot, as Hoppington is a special place. But think back to field day at center, meeting the Kenyan runners at Elmwood, chanting alongside Miss Law or Miss Tremblay at Hopkins, getting ready for the lip dub at the middle school, or the prom, Friday night football games, and pep rallies here at the high school. Whether you're itching to get out of this town, or you plan to stay here for the rest of your life, you know better than I do, this is a unique, close-knit community that has helped shape and mold you into the young adults you are today. So embrace it, and appreciate it, and always be proud of your roots. And lastly, keep grinding. Now, I know some people are thinking, is this guy serious? He cancels dances and then tells us to keep grinding? <laughs> I'm not talking about that kind of grinding. I'm talking about how important it is to truly be resilient in life, because trust me, life is going to be hard, sometimes too hard. You will no doubt be tested, told no, be rejected, or passed up for an opportunity. You will also make decisions you'll probably regret and mistakes along the way. But I urge you to always be true to yourself, stay committed, positive, motivated, and always continue to move forward every day, one step at a time. It's in the challenging, sometimes scary moments in our lives that we learn the most about ourselves. And what I think you'll find, based on what I've seen over the last four years, is that you're all stronger, more resilient, and more talented than you even realize. So class of 2017, it's time to take your talents and abilities outside the walls of HHS. Some of you may not realize what those talents are yet, but that's okay. When you do, make sure to maximize them, celebrate them, and make them work for you, because remember that this next chapter is yours to write, no one else's. In about 20 minutes, everybody's GPA is back to 0.0. .0. So in closing, class of 2017, thank you for four great years. Thank you for your curiosity, your energy, and personality. They will be missed next fall. Thank you and congrats for setting the bar so high for years to come in regards to your commitment and performance in the classroom, as well as the amount of times you called Fox News to break a story about a decision I made. <laughs> Graduates, I wish you all the best in the future, and promise me you'll always be kind to one another, be positive, and keep smiling. Thank you. Okay, now the moment we've all been waiting for, the awarding of diplomas. Yes, all right, I know it's hot in here. We'll try to do the best that we can. So the school has made arrangements with Hawkmeyer Studios to photograph each senior or he or she receives a diploma here tonight. These professional photographs will be made available for viewing and purchase after the graduation. 
So now I would like to invite up assistant principals Josh Hanna and Justin Palmerville, who will be reading the names of each graduate, and Jean Birchman, school committee member, to present the diplomas. Emily Page Mastriani. Mercedes Marie LaHaye. Cameron Jill Boyce. Siddharth Sean Shindy. Ryan John Branch. Olivia Grace Newman Spar. Spencer William Coveney. Sarah Aquilia Durr. Brian George Gone. Jonathan Richard Katz. John Angus McDonald. Parker Ann Petruni. Madison Nicole Abbott. Spencer Burned Abbott. James Francis Adams. Simra Nazin Ahmed. Freeman John Alfano. Megan Kathleen Anderson. Alyssa Rose Annenberg. Sarah Elizabeth Archambault. Haley Farr. Arnold, Stephen Aaron Oslander, Scott Tyler Babigian, Alexandra Elizabeth Balerna, Ryan Mark Bannon, M. Catherine Mary Barada. Abigail Yvonne Bartlett. Darren Robert Bates. Molly Claire Bennett. Kalina Lynn Bergman. Diana Deletta Charlotte Bernardini. Brian Reese Best. Alan Biggers. Harrison Stephen Black. Justin Anthony Blanchard. Timothy Matthew Bloomer. Marcello Bonetti, Mishti Bose, Luana Brasil Conti, Aiden Allen Brooks, Shannon Elizabeth Brown, John Bernard. Boudet, Christopher Shepard Burdick, Julia Mary Berdoulis, Emma Catherine Burke, Julia Catherine Canistrari, Alyssa. Marie Carboni, James Marshall Cavallo, 
Isla, Sarah, Chelik, Samuel, Brady, Sistari, Joseph, Paul, Champagne the Third, Surong, Chen, Ming Yang, Victor, Xing Ang, Elizabeth, Anna, Christ, Song, Chu, Will, Michael, Sizensky, Tristan, Vale, Clark, William, Jordan, Coles, Jacob, Thomas, Collins, Maeve, Nicola, Cross, Declan, Flynn, Curry, Cameron, Kay, Deloya, Tanvi, Rajesh, Daga, Rajkumar, Shering, Dandekar, Lydia, Rose, Di Giovanni, Michael, David, Domingo, Cole, Thomas, Dragsbeck, Kerry, Grace, Driscoll, Abigail, Ella, Druffner, Natalie, Sophia, Dushman, Charles, Robert, Duma, Patrick, Douglas, Dustin, Jillian, Grace, Egan, Thomas, Andrew, Edgar, Wyatt, Robert, Elliot, Laney, Melvina, Emerson, Victor, Luis, Australia, Kyle, Joseph, Fairbanks, Benjamin, Robert, Falertra, Benjamin, Nicholas, Fargiano, Jack, Tyler, Feather, Shannon, Margaret, Finnegan, Colette, Mariel, Fritchie, Elizabeth Ann, Nicole, Gane, Emily, Catherine, Gilday, Isabel, Grace, Giordano, Brian, John, Juicy, Sarah, Luis, Glidden, Jacob, John, Glover, Emily, Ann, Getz, Stephen, Michael, Gomez, Valentina, Gomez, Gomez, Caroline, Taylor, Goodwin, Julia, Shay, Gorgel, William, Laird, Griffin, Emma, Lee, Griffiths, Matthew, Jacob, Gross, Natalie, Lynn, Garino, Brenda, Gutierrez, Delace, Alexandra, Ann, Hagen, 
Lauren, Elizabeth, Ham, Kira, Shirley, Hanson, Paige, Allison, Harvey, Courtney, Lynn, Hassan, Danielle, Rose, Hassan, Molly, Marie, Hawkins, Jeremy, Edward, Hazard, Elizabeth, Fletcher, Henenberry, Megan, Fitzgerald, Perlehy, Heather, Marie, Holly, Nicholas, Joseph, Horgan, Nicole, McGinnis, Hudson, Bowernluck, John Watsiri, Maria, Jimena, Jarabaka, Caroline, Elizabeth, Johnson, Swati, Sanjeev, Joshi, Anna, Juliet, Joyce, Sydney, Francis, Joyce, Benjamin, Hale, Caymans, Michael, Anthony, Carlos, Mitchell, Raymond, Carpi, Shnea, Karthikian, Jonathan, Connor, Keeley, Yong Jun, Elizabeth, Ash Ashley Jane A. Kistner, Elise Marie Kisla, Isabella Julia Comadromas, Juliana Pauline Kramer, Alexander Dmitrievich Kravitz, Emma. Rebecca Lakasha, Andrew James Lane, Matthew Timothy Lawrence, Jake David LeBlanc, Elizabeth Lee. <laughs> Hai Ping Lee. <clears throat> Rebecca Ann Liberta. Sarah Jane Lincoln. Phoebe Elizabeth Lind. Megan Elizabeth Locke. Nathaniel James Loring. Julia Francis Lotvin. Sophia Ida Lucas. Luke V. Lucos. Elizabeth Ann McDonald. Andrew Gatano Mace. Rachel Elise McIntosh. Allison Margaret Mafiori. Yeah. 
Kayla Elizabeth Maloney. Julia Ann Mann. Kelsey Hope Maku. Grace Alana Maquidant. Justin Robert Marr. Priscilla Ivy Martin Pass. Ava Sophia Marzaki Traversa. Christopher Raymond Mastriani. Ryan Leopoldo Mastriani. Maxwell Vincent Moro. Tiana Elizabeth McCann. Timothy James McGrath. Andrew Jeremiah McGuire. Madeline Emma McGuire. Brett Andrew McIntyre. Sachi Merota. Gabriel Sosa Mendez. Lauren Heather Mercia. Anna Elizabeth Mezit. Nicholas Anthony Mirabili. Kylie Ann Moran. Sadie Sinead Morgan. William Charles Nado. Susan Ann Nagel. Meredith Jacqueline Nealon. Jenna Kelly Lynn Moffat. Jake Matthew Neary. Lauren Mary Ness. Millie May Ness. Jennifer Marie Nixon. Gianmarco Nobile. Austin Walter Odell. Eric Russell Olafson. Liam Spencer Dinsmore Palacos. Daniel Alexander Paleco. Matthew Cole Pellucci. Bronwyn Sophia Pappas Byers. Maria Vladiminova Parfanova. Brooke Easton Parker. Madison Ann Puella. Sarah Merritt Pearson. Stephanie Abbott Pearson. Caroline Elizabeth Peters. 
Eloise Alexis Petresca. Alexandra Bay Phipps. Taylor Catherine Pischel. William Michael Pickens. Rebecca Margaret Pohl. Jeffrey Joseph Poisson. Timothy Joseph Ferreira Ponce. Jade Elise Puvacad. Ricardo Miguel Portal. Michaela Ruth Pucci. John V. Puri. Lily Catherine Recatore. Devin Ray Rancourt. Kyle James Rector. Gregory Matthew George Raymond. Emma Marie Relly. John Alexander Reynolds. Kenneth Andrew Rhodes. Samantha Joanne Riley. Elizabeth Patricia Roach. Kyle Patrick Rock. Karen Valaria Rodriguez. Zachary John Rogers. Everett John Rolfe. Cassidy Lynn Russo. Jessica Lucha Ratolo. Logan Olivia Salyards. Abigail Michaela Sandman. Chelsea Rose Scanlon. Kyle James Schlick. Duncan Doyle Scherner. Anna Marguerite Schoenhorn. Christine Elise Schwartz. Allison Natalia Simone. Maria Vittorio Shino. Rebecca May Selman. Rishi Selva Kumaran. Natalie Margaret Shambo. Parima Sharma. Megan Elizabeth Sheeran. Macy Lee Sherburn. Jonathan James Simmer. Mackenzie Rose Simmons. Haley Catherine Sinical. Abigail Loretta Sloan. Jason Tucker Snow. Nicholas Reed Stanley. Evan Paul Starbard. Isla Claire Stewart. 
Isaac Lee Stillwell. Julia Elizabeth Stratton. Riley Christine Strickland. Jamie Catherine Sullivan. Rory Patrick Sullivan. Jeremy Michael Strepionkiewicz. Julie Ann Tarantino. Jason Tao. Nicholas Winfield Temple. John Robert Thornton. Timothy Aaron Tompkins. Emily Julia Trudeau. Nathan James Tewitt. Ariana Joan Turner. Taylor Ray Velasquez. John Henry Vokey. Emma Catherine Welgum. Amber Ann Walsh. Catherine Simone Walsh. Catherine Mary Walters. Chion Sun Wang. Erin Elizabeth Webb. Emily Wei. Tobias Henry White. Luke Junho Whitehouse. Lindsay Catherine Whittles. Alfred Frederick Wiedersheim. Ryan Christopher Wolf. Jeremy Grant Woodward. Claire Yitong Wu. Amy Zhao. Andrew Zamo Su. Meredith Su. Calvin Fan Chao Yang. Hong Yi Zhou. Jamie Marie Zeff. Now I would like to ask all graduates to rise. No, take it down. And led by your class president, Emily Mastriani, move your tassel to the left side of your mortarboard. Assistant Superintendent Kavanaugh, school committee members, administrators, faculty, family, and friends, as principal of Hopkinton High School, I hereby proclaim that the members of the class of 2017 standing before you have successfully met the requirements of a diploma as set forth by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts in this school district. It is my distinct honor to declare them graduated.
Congratulations to the class of 2017. We would like to ask that all audience members remain in their seats as the graduates exit the Athletic Center. Thank you very much.